Okay, so I actually did find a solution here to why the spacing was not working out last time. Uh, I moved the backslash from link replace to you take the shovel, and for whatever reason, this now works. So just be aware that this backslash to prevent line breaks can be a little finicky and you just kind of have to play with it until you get the result that you desire. Okay, so now that the player can grab the shovel, we need to be able to hit the gravedigger with it. So let's open up the gravedigger passage, and here we're going to once again use dynamic text to conditionally show something based upon whether the player has the shovel. And so thankfully, we don't even have to create a new variable, we can just reuse the has shovel variable. So we're going to create some space here and say if has shovel is true, we will give the player the ability to hit him with the shovel. And in this particular case, we're going to use the shovel as a link into another passage. So let's convert that, and we're going to turn this one into unconscious. And then we need to close the if statement and close the passage. And it has created now this unconscious passage. Really quick, I'm going to open this up, and we're just going to say the unconscious digger, just so we know we actually made it. All right, so let's test this. We start out in the graves. Now, before we grab the shovel, let's go west, go west, and we see the grave digger. He's got an extra space in here, so we'll have to deal with that. But the option to hit him is not here. So we will go east, go east, grab the shovel, go west, let's go east again. We see that we can't pick up the shovel again because we already have it. Let's go west, go west, and now we have the option to hit him with the shovel. And you'll see that the double spacing is above that, so that's where I need to focus my attentions when I want to get rid of one of these extra lines. But let's go ahead and hit him with the shovel, and it takes us to the unconscious gravedigger. So real quick, I'm going to open the grave digger, and I think this is the one that will get rid of it. And then we're going to open the unconscious passage, and let's add some text. Paste in the grave digger lies knocked out before you. And now we want to take the key off of him. So just like with the shovel, let's go ahead and create a link replace with the command take the key. And when that happens, it will say you grab the key and close that off. So let's just make sure this works real quick. Take the shovel, go west, go west, hit him with the shovel, here we are, we take the key, you grab the key. You can see there's a bit of a problem here, we're now stuck in this passage, so we need to add more to it. And, just like the shovel here, we're going to have to conditionally allow that text to be there. The reason being that if we knock out the gravedigger and provide some links back to other passages, we don't want to then come back into the gravedigger and be able to knock him out again. In fact, what we're going to want is to create a new set of links with conditions on their own that will go directly to the unconscious gravedigger if we've already knocked him out. We'll work on that a little bit later. But for right now, we need to be worried that every time a player comes back to the unconscious gravedigger, we don't want there to be an infinite number of keys. So now we're going to create a new variable. Let's just go ahead and copy, paste that, and this will be called has key. So now we're going to come back into our unconscious passage, and we're going to make a space here, and we are now going to say if has key is false, then all this will happen, and then we need to close out the if statement like so. So let's actually make a way to get out of here as well, uh, which is going to come back into the gravedigger passage, and copy that, come back to unconscious, paste it. If we close this, you can see that it has now made links back to the fountain and the pathway.
And one very important thing we need to do, going back into the unconscious passage, once the player has grabbed the key, we need then to make as key be equal to true. So we just say set as key to true. So let's see what we've got here. All right, we'll take the shovel, go west, go west, hit the grave digger. He's got a key. We'll take it. You grab the key. Let's go back to the fountain. Let's go back to the grave digger. Oh, there he is again, so we'll hit him. Uh, but he doesn't have the key. Let's go south, go back north to see the silhouette. There's the grave digger. Hit him again. Again, he doesn't have the key. Okay, so a few things. First of all, there's an extra space in there. And secondly, we probably don't want to let the player continuously come back here and hit this poor bastard over the head, knocking him out again and again. But before we start adding some new stuff, let's go in here real quick and try and fix the spacing issue. It is most likely that. Let's play this real quick. Take the shovel, head west, head west, hit him with the shovel, take the key, go east, go west, hit him again. Now the spacing is right. Okay, so when the players are in the fountain or path area, if they've already knocked out the gravedigger, we want to just jump straight to the unconscious gravedigger. So let's go ahead and open up our story in it. Copy and paste yet another variable here. And we will simply say unconscious. Okay, so let's start in the fountain. And in particular, what we want to deal with here is the link to the west and the gravedigger. Okay, so to make this easier to see, I'm just going to pull this out of here, copy this, come down a bit, and say paste. Okay, so now remember, Gravedigger is the one where he is still conscious, and Unconscious is the one where he's not. So we need to add another link in there. So right below that, we're going to paste it again, but this time instead of going to Gravedigger, we're going to say Unconscious. So the first thing we need to decide is is he unconscious? So we'll say if unconscious is true, then in that case, it's going to go straight to, let's cut this out of here, paste it down. It's going to go to the unconscious part. Now we're going to use else if and this one is going to be has key is false. So you see the logic here. If he's already unconscious, that means we just want to keep going back to the unconscious passage. But when we say else, that means if unconscious is false and has key is false, that means we want to go to the gravedigger. Because if we haven't knocked him out and we haven't taken the key, then obviously we want to go to the one where he's still standing up. And then we want to do one more that is simply else, and then we will copy this unconscious link, paste it there, and then close the if statement. Okay, so to review what's going on here. First, it's going to say, is unconscious true? In other words, did we already knock him out? Because if we did, we're going to bypass the gravedigger and just go straight to the unconscious passage. Otherwise, if we didn't knock him out, and we don't have the key, that means we still need to deal with him, so it's going to show us the gravedigger. And then it's going to say, otherwise, meaning has key will be true, which would therefore mean that he would also be unconscious, because that is the only way we can get the key, then we will just go back to him being unconscious. And this may seem a little redundant, but the important part here is that if we do not say else after this, we're not confirming that we also have the key. Which means that if we went to the gravedigger in the unconscious one, but didn't pick up the key, then has key would still be false, meaning we'd still come back to the gravedigger. So by adding this extra line in here, we are confirming that whether or not we have the key, as long as he's unconscious, we'll go back to the unconscious. I hope that makes sense, because it was a little confusing for me to figure out, too, when I was first making this. Let's go ahead and take all of this. We will cut that and then replace this gravedigger with all of that code. Make sure that all the extra lines are deleted. And one very important thing that we actually need to make sure happens 
is that unconscious turns to true in the first place. So now let's close this, come to the unconscious gravedigger, and at the very beginning, as soon as you show up here, we'll just go ahead and set unconscious to true. All right, let's try it. So we'll take the shovel, we'll walk to the west, walk to the west, hit the man. Let's not take the key. Let's head back east, head back west, and you can see we're right back to the gravedigger. We'll take the key this time, head back east, head back west. There's no longer a key there. And now we basically just have to do this for the path. So let's go back into Fountain. We'll come to the if statement, go all the way back up. So in between the graves and the outside, have all that selected, we will control copy, head into the path, and we will select the line that has the grave digger on it, and we will control paste. And now we need to make sure that instead of going west, all of these say north, because from the path, the grave digger is to the north. All right, let's try this. One final time. We will take the shovel, we'll go west, we'll go west. Let's go south first to the path, go back north, make sure we're still in the same location. Let's hit him with the shovel, and we're now in the unconscious grave digger. We'll leave the key there, let's go south, and back north, and east, and back west. Okay, so now we can finally take the key. Let's, uh, let's go south. Come back north, Gravedigger is still knocked out before us. Let's go east and west, Gravedigger is still knocked out. Perfect. Okay, so that one is a little bit confusing, but hopefully not too hard to follow. So now we're prepared to go all the way down to the cottage, which will open the final puzzle and end the game.